Good morning, everyone. It's Ben Jones here. I'm in the uh, I'm live from the coffee workshop again. Uh, we're going to take a look at two different filtration methods. I've got I've got uh, no surprise. Sorry, one second. Just cancel that. All right. I was trying to get rid of my shadow, but we're just going to have to live with it. All right. So I often use. Um, the Bee House dripper, the Melita style. Uh, I've talked uh, at length about how much I just appreciate this uh, contribution to the coffee world. Um, classically, I go paper filter. I tend to be just a paper filter kind of guy. Uh, but there is on the market these reusable, some people call them the Forever Filter, the Gold Cone. Um, they go by different names. Sometimes they're actually gold plated wires. Um, there's some cool class about what gold actually does. But anyway, what I'm interested in is what does it do with what drips through? This isn't a versus kind of thing. This isn't a competition, which one's better, because um, this comes down to your own personal subjective. Um, yeah, your, your subjective choices. So some people like one or the other. Let's take a look at it. So what I have here is um, I'll talk while I start pouring uh, the number two Molita paper filter. Give it a rinse and a preheat. And even though this gold cone is metal and it doesn't have any paper flavor to wash out, I'm going to give it a rinse just because I do want to preheat that bee house uh, vessel. So we got that. Excellent. I'm going to set that right on the scale. And turn the scale on. All right. So one of the things that happens with these metal ones is uh, there is some buildup of oil over time. So something you can do is uh, do rinse it and taste your rinse water. See if it tastes like stale coffee. That indicates um, a deep need for a deeper clean. All right. I have coffee ground for uh, my paper filter. Um, it's kind of the, you know, drip grind, a little bit on the kind of the fine side of the middle. Um, this is the Columbia Las Brisas from Batdorf and Bronson, of course. Um, if you watch my, if you watch me much, you know that I drink a lot of this coffee. Um, so I'm just going to put that in. 19 grams, already weighed out, set to go. And then over here, I went ahead and took my grinder and I went two clicks more coarse. I want to be just ever so slightly more coarse on this metal filter. And because I'm brewing two cups of coffee, this isn't a perfect apples apples comparison um, because the second cup is our Swiss water decaffeinated coffee from Peru. So that's what I'm drinking for my second cup because, well, for me, coffee is not about the caffeine. Coffee is about the flavor. All right. But I digress. All right. Give a little shake. Give a little shake to level. So we're just going to brew these real quick. Tear, tear, timer. So standard brewing technique. We're just going to add about twice our mass for both. So 19 grams going in, 38, 40 grams of water to start that bloom. Give it a good solid 30 seconds ish. It's not rocket science. It doesn't have to be. What you're looking for is you just want to look to see that the, that the dome of coffee isn't rising anymore. Um, that indicates that we have a good amount of water saturating and a release of the gases. All right, we'll come through, break up our crust, come through, break up our crust. All right, so let's talk about some expectations um, on these coffees. Paper filter and metal filter. I don't like to use benefits, but I might say benefit. Um, every once in a while. It's not so much a benefit, it's just a different way of being. Um, a benefit of paper pro of the paper products is that they're lower energy to create. Uh, they don't use 
uh, met precious metals or anything of that sort. And the paper is grown on a paper farm, uh, trees from a paper farm. So there's that. Um, the metal ones are reusable. You don't have to toss them out. It's just the reality of what it is. So um, beyond reusable and compostable, there should be a marked difference between these two coffees, owing almost entirely to the filtration method. If you're working in the kitchen and you spill, uh, just say you knock over a, just a glass of water, what are you gonna reach for to grab it? A cotton cloth towel, a uh, paper towel. Perfect, we'll soak that up. Something you're not gonna reach for, you're not gonna reach for a the metal mesh off of your screen door. Um, you're not, if you use one of those uh, copper mesh um, grilling sheets, that's not gonna absorb the water. It's a silly thing to be talking about. Point being, metal doesn't absorb. So, what does it mean for our coffee? When we absorb into our filter with that paper filter, it's going to pull out oils. It's going to grab onto some of the fine particulate. It's going to prevent those elements from passing into the beverage. And if you don't get oils, that reduces the viscosity, that reduces the mouthfeel. Um, if you're not getting the particulate, little fine particles, um, you're definitely not going to get that element of the texture through there. Just gonna scoot those together a little bit. And we've got them dripping and coming through. So that's the biggest difference is really that the metal ones allow more coffee material to pass through where the paper filters out the elements that are gonna give uh, texture and body. So we tend to get a little more flavor clarity on a paper filter and on the metal filtration we we sacrifice a little bit of flavor clarity it doesn't become as crisp and crystal clear but in trade for that we receive more body and texture excellent i'm going to call this one and just kind of i kind of stalled that out a little bit that's all right that happens and our metal filtration excellent all right so have a nice cup of coffee. Um, I don't know if you can see on camera the level of clarity that this has. It's just a it's a nice, good, clear, crisp, and clean cup of coffee. All right. If I were to taste this. Tastes like Columbia Las Brisas, perfect. All right, now on this one, you can see there's a little bit of a ring, a little bit of lacing that happens. Um, that's not baby crema, that's not anything like that. Um, we have to have the espresso, high pressure to get cremas. Um, but that little bit of lacing that we see on our metal filter and we don't get on our paper, that's just little tiny bits of particle a little bit of texture. Let's put a light on this. And even in a different size container, this has, it's a lot more opaque. So I can see more fine particles floating inside there. Um, this is much more akin to a French press. Uh, if there was, you know, a continuum, we could put the Chemex on the farthest end and the, uh, and, um, you know, get Turkish coffee on the other end. Um, French press is much more near Turkish, a lot of texture, a lot of body. Um, this would be on the French pressy side of things. All right, um, do a little swirl. I'm gonna pour it into my mug. Yeah, I can just see it. You can just see it when it pours. There's just a little more texture, a little more body in there. That's good. It's a good cup of decaf. Um, there's a lot of good cups of decaf. Don't be scared just because it says decaf. This is good. It has a much more full mouthfeel. I can feel it. 
uh, sitting on my tongue longer. It lingers. The flavors stay, stay longer. That's a real nice uh, point of the metal filter. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do any sort of like, you know, better than worse than. I do want to touch, however, on the cleanup. When I'm done with my paper filters, I go like this. I drop it into the compost. I give my brewer a little rinse to get the coffee off, and then we're done. With this, I have to knock it out. Pardon me one moment. <laughs> and then we're still left with a lot of residue in there. So I want to make sure that I take this and turn it upside down. Oh, I don't have I don't have a, a basin, but um, you know, take this to the sink upside down and rinse from the outside inward, and that should wash out the uh, the particulate, and then go back and clean up this. Another thing that happens with the metal filters is because it's in the nature of um, a reusable thing to to let some some stuff linger. Over time, this is going to build up coffee oils. Doesn't matter how diligent you are with your daily cleaning, you will periodically need to um, give this a bath in something that will break down those oils. Baking sodas, um, vinegars. Um, a nice baking soda bath is actually pretty good. You can also try some of the espresso machine cleaning or coffee cleaning products. It's a little bit harsh on the plastic framework of this. Um, over time it can create uh, some deterioration and brittleness. Um, another thing with these is that very slightly over time the mesh will deteriorate um, and give larger particles. You might need to go with a slightly more coarse grind after years and years of use. So, that being said, paper filters are fantastic. Metal cone filters are fantastic. It all depends on what you're looking for. Crisp, clear clarity of flavor with a simplified cleanup. Or do you want to have a cup of coffee with a little more texture body? Mm. Don't think that this doesn't have flavor. I don't want to mislead you. This is very full of flavor. This is a delicious cup of coffee. It's nutty, has a slight liveliness to it, has real rich deep chocolate tone, and it coats the palate. Much more lively acidity. floral. Fantastic cup of coffee. They're both great. They're both good. What I want you to do is just to be informed on um, ways to tweak and craft your flavor profile. Um, these fit in any type of Molita style cone brewer, the elongated cone. Uh, you can also get that. I love, I really do actually like these inexpensive three, or five, three to five dollar plastic cones. They're great. Um, one of the things I like about them so much is I have here, this is the first Bee House stripper I ever got, and um, I'm sentimental fool. Even after I dropped it, um, I couldn't get rid of it because um, so I like it. I think I'll fix it. I have the other part of the lake right there. But with the plastic gun, it doesn't matter. As an added uh, hazard, just on, on a side note, um, coffee workshop. Um, I have an eighth inch steel plate for my countertop. Um, so when I'm uh, moving glass around, I try to I try to keep. I have some of these really cool um, cork uh, little little pads, and then also some cloths. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. Check out baddorfcoffee.com. Um, we're still sending out coffees. Uh, with a purchase of $30 or more, we get complimentary standard shipping. Um, if you need a brewer, we've got a handful of little fun things, um, some different cone drippers. 
the 60 AeroPress, and of course the Chemex. Pick yourself, pick yourself up one of those, and then that'll get you 10% off on a bag of our Dancing Goats blend. So that'll help to uh, get you started on learning how to use. Um, and as an added bonus, thank you for joining us today. Um, if you go to our web store, badriftcoffee.com, use the discount code WATCHANDLEARN10. That's watch and learn with the number 10, all one word. And that'll get you an additional 10% off, just as our way of saying thank you for coming and listening to Ben Jones talk about coffee. And happy brewing. It's Friday. Um, I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks, so... Still tune in on Mondays and Fridays, but I can't guarantee you'll see me. It's just time to take some time off. We'll be back in October. More from the coffee workshop. See you, everybody.